God is a God of order. But be sure that everything is done properly and in order. Now, this is in reference to how they were to conduct church services, but it's reflective of the nature of God and the principle of order. God will not bless a mess. God is a God of structure. This is why I find it funny when I hear people criticizing uh, ministries that are organized or that are large or that plan things. I think that society today kind of criticizes the big and the grand for no other reason other than it's become cynical. But that which is organized is of God, typically. Uh, this is actually not to say that, you know, like the corporations are, not, are of God or that uh, every government agency is of God. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that order itself, the principle of order, that comes from the nature of God. God is a God of structure. God is a God of order. I find it interesting when people say things like, well, I'm not really into organized religion. Well, what are you into then, I say? Disorganized religion, chaotic religion, confusing religion. No, God is a God of order. Name me one thing God ever did that didn't have a system. He designed the body. There are systems there. We live in an ecosystem that's based in a solar system. There are systems of mathematics. There are systems of morality. There are systems of spiritual laws. The church is a system. It's a structure. Yes, it's relational. Yes, it's a family. But even a family, a family unit is a system. And so we have to stop disdaining this idea that there should be order and structure. Order gives way to excellence. Order gives way to consistency. Order makes room for discipline. Order makes room for discipline. Many times people have an issue with discipline because they have no direction. And they have no direction because they have no order. And order helps you to budget your time. So don't just wake up and go about your day and just let the day come to you. Take dominion over the day by telling it what goes where. Take dominion over your time by writing down how you will spend your time. Being intentional. I know that in my life, this has been a very helpful tool, especially with all of the different things that come at me from lots of different directions, people pulling in so many different directions. Many people saying, I just need 20 minutes. I just need 30 minutes. I just need five minutes. And people don't realize that if all of their time were added up, there wouldn't be enough time in the day to get back to everyone. And so, I have to learn to be disciplined, to make sure, first and foremost, that I'm making time for the Lord, time in the Word, time in prayer. I structure my day around that. Time for my health, time for my family, time for my wife, time for my daughter. Make sure that we have date nights. Make sure we have family days. Make sure that there's time for rest. Make sure that there's time for preparing sermons, that there's time to meet with the staff about media and events and administration and legal considerations. Make sure that there's time for all of it. And so in order to do that, there has to be this budgeting of time. There's nothing wrong with that. Organization is spiritual. Get it out of your head that organization is contrary to spirituality. Get it out of your head that the more spontaneous something is, the more spiritual it is. Yes, God can be spontaneous, but he's only spontaneous to us. He had the plan all along. God may seem disruptive, but it's only disruptive if we've planned according to our own way instead of God's way, because he's ultimately going to do what he wants to do. So everything must be done properly and in order. And, and don't just budget your time, by the way. Budget your energy. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, you only have so much emotional energy to give throughout any given week. So picture your energy. I'm talking about emotional energy, mental energy. Picture it like in a cup and imagine that the energy is like water. You can only give out your energy to so many things. And otherwise, you become drained. Don't give yourself to every development in church drama. Don't give yourself to gossip. Don't give yourself to slander. Don't give yourself to defending yourself. Don't give yourself to explaining yourself to people who refuse to misunderstand you. You know, there are some people who are benefited by their misunderstanding of you because it helps them to feel better about themselves. And so they have to stick with the narrative they've built about you. So to defend yourself to them would be a waste of time. Don't give your energy to that. Don't give your energy to backbiting. Don't give your energy to doubt. Don't give your energy to cynicism. Don't give your energy to guilt. 
Don't give your energy to the lies of the enemy. Don't give your energy to people who just want to take, 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 and never want to give back. Guard your energy and give the first fruit. Watch this now. Give the first fruit of your finances. Yes, to the Lord. We all know that. Give the first fruit of your time. Yes, to the Lord. We all know that. But consider this. Give the first fruits of your mental and emotional energy to the Lord. When is that at the peak for you? For some that's in the morning, for some that's in the evening, whenever that may be, give that best to the Lord, the first fruits. And you'll find that as you begin to guard and budget your energy, just like you guard and budget your finances, just like you guard and budget your time, you'll find that there is a consistency that begins to develop in your life because you're not giving yourself every which way to everything. You're learning to say, I'm not going to waste my time, my breath, my mental energy on something like that. Learn to rise above the noise. Learn to be without distraction. Learn to stay focused on what really matters. You only have so much time. You only have so much energy and you have to learn to pour that into the proper compartments structured throughout the day. God does everything with order. Discipline without organization can become activity without progress. Let me say that again. Discipline without organization can become activity without progress. Because discipline is action, organization is direction. And if you're acting without knowing where you're going, then you're going to find a lack of progress in your life. So you need to do all three of these together. Maybe you have had discipline and you've made decisions every day to do what you know you ought to do, but there was no direction. You didn't decide what book of the Bible you were going to actually read. By the way, and this is, I'll get back to that point in just a moment. Just off on this tangent, you ever notice that it's easier to commit to a discipline when you have a plan. That's why organization is there. So for example, you go to read the word and if you're just kind of scattered, reading a few verses from Isaiah and then jumping back to Genesis and jumping forward to Revelation and scattering yourself all over half a chapter of this here and half a chapter of that there and a couple of verses from this section and, and this story over here, you're jumping all over the place. How are you going to know you're making progress? Where, where's, the, where's the line here? Where's that commitment taking you? So discipline without direction doesn't yield any progress. So you need to decide what book of the Bible are you going to start reading? I want you to tell me in the comments right now, what book of the Bible, let, let's make this plain here. What book of the Bible are you going to commit to reading starting now? And if you're already in a book of the Bible, tell me which one you're going to finish. And then tell me when you're going to pray. When are you going to pray? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way through Saturday and Sunday. When are you going to pray on those days? What does your schedule look like? You need to be a good steward of what God has given to you, and that will yield fruitfulness. 